on the one and all to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Denali 18. When last we met the party, it was requested to go north to seek out a mysterious noble that the Nykaloth had mentioned. The king was pleasant, but confirmed that they would not get their reward until all potential avenues of the mystery were explored. Once the party left, the mood in the throne room changed dramatically, with Grish taking a tongue lashing for his excessive involvement with the other members of the party. We now begin aboard the Flying Porpoise, sailing out of the city harbor. We just got off this damn boat, complained Phidias the Rogue. It hasn't even been a full day. I barely got to drink much at all, he continued. The group stood at the bow of the ship, watching Sadon get smaller and smaller. You heard the king, interjected Yolanda. We don't resolve this issue. We don't get paid. What did you expect from a monarch? As she shot at him mean glance at Grish. The enormous cleric averted his gaze, causing one of Yolanda's eyebrows to raise. Look, I don't like it either, said Sir Omel, Knight of Bacchus, but I understand why the king wants to confirm the story. If he has more traitors in his regime, he needs to weed them out. Nodding, Brother Stance of the Verte Order chimed in. I agree with Omel. Besides, that demon just didn't come up with that storyline off the top of its head. Besides, we finish jobs. Phidias throws his stick into the water and mutters, ah, I still don't like it. I concur with my diminutive friend, said Harris, causing the others to look around. He continued by saying, Look, I know we took the job, but damn it, that dragon kicked the stuffing out of us. And with you guys nearly dying, we deserve a reward. I find it a bit disconcerting that he seems to be hedging on us now. The faces of his associates all pondered these words for a few minutes, letting the logic sink in. The mage continued, nodding at Grish. And then there's you. Me? asked the cleric. Yes, you. You've been abnormally quiet this morning. In the past, you seemed to be more God save the queen kind of guy. Is there something going on with you? A smirk crossed the Zenobian's face, and he nodded. Yeah, there is. The group waited for his response, which came abruptly. I'm hung over. Is that okay? Hung over? exclaimed Phidias. And you didn't invite me? Shaking his head, the cleric wandered down below to lay down. Brother Stance looked at Harris and shook his head. Well, what do you think? Harris thought for a moment before replying. I think there's something else going on here. We may need to keep an eye on him. A low whistle escaped the rogue's lips, and the group turned to face the gnome. Seeing him staring up, they all followed his gaze and noticed they were passing under a gigantic iron statue of a warrior. Yolanda murmured, Impressive, but scowled as Sir Omel pointed out that she was looking up the armored skirt of a statue. Phidias piped up, explaining that the statue was actually alive and it is called an iron golem. The others looked at him quizzically and peppered him with questions. Holding up his hands for silence, he explained, Kellogg's told me that some old mage found plans on how to build a living statue from iron. The old king, Ballas, Balto, Beauregard, something, commissioned it. Once it was complete, it followed the orders of the king and actually helped repel a force of Grishas. Grishas? asked Brother Stance. You know, Xenobophiles, said Phidias. Zenobian was Yolanda's response in correcting him. Yeah, Zenobian. Anyway, the thing destroyed a crapload of ships, and it is some kind of super weapon. Sir Omel sized the creation out, pointing out that it didn't look like it could move at all. Harris interjected that a golem had a special item encased within its body frame that allowed it to function. Anyone possessing its mantra can control it. Mantra? asked Brother Stance. Harris answered with, 
A mantra is a small item that is enchanted to control the item inside the body. It's like a leather tether on a bird. If you control the strings, you control the beast. Those are some strong strings, said Phidias, as the others shook their heads. You know, you're an idiot, don't you? Asked Yolanda Two Blades. Aye, but I'm a good-looking idiot, smiled the rogue. A few hours of uneventful sailing found most of the party below decks preparing for bed. Brother Stance stood at the port side of the ship, looking out across the moonlit waters in the inland sea, when Harris, the mage, approached him. Not going to bed, my old friend? asked the wizard. The monk tossed a piece of wood into the waters below and shrugged his shoulders. What's on your mind? Stance thought for a moment and had a long exhale before beginning to speak. What are we doing? What are we doing going to the Northlands? Taken aback by his friend's attitude, Harris replied, Going to check on this nobleman mentioned by the Nikoloth. Why so bothered? The monk turned to face his friend and began a, to give a verbal tirade. You and I both know there's no problem. This is a wild goose chase. We resolved their issue, and the king is screwing us. I want to know why. In the past, we've been consistent as a group. We go in, we fix a problem, and we get the Hades out. Why are we giving any credence to this lost noble at all? And what's up with Grish? Past weeks on the adventuring trail, he sauntered around like he was in charge. Since we returned to Saydown, that behemoth's been quiet, like a whipped puppy. Where did the strong cleric go? Aggravated, he tossed another piece of wood into the water and watched it bob away. What is your problem, he said to the smiling mage. Harris chuckled and put his hands up, surrendering. You know, that might have been the most words you have spoken to me in one sitting. Ever. The comment brought a grin to the monk's face, and he grinned shyly. Yeah, you're right. I'm just pissed off, I guess. The wizard clapped him on the back and replied, So am I, Stance. So am I. Maybe we'll find the answers when we reach solid ground. After a large yawn, the mage excused himself as Brother Stance continued to pace deeply in thought along the deck. After two days of crossing the Inlet Bay, the party found themselves approaching land. The captain pointed out that they would have to take a rowboat to land, as there was no dock large enough here to support the flying porpoise. He added that the fishermen present can be a little suspicious of strangers, but they are kind enough folk. The small boat was lowered over the side, and the captain wished them well. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.